Here I have a Toyota Sequoia 2006. Actually belongs to a subscriber of mine. It turns out he wasn't that far from me, so he brought it over so I could look at it. Apparently it has a pretty bad power steering leak. So someone told him it needs a rack and pinion. He wanted a second opinion, so that's where we're at. It's so bad, he said that he has to pretty much fill it up once a day, if not a little bit more often than that, which is substantial. So anyway, you can see I put this cardboard down. This right here dripping is from the AC, so it's just water. But that right there is power steering fluid and it's coming right off of here, dripping right off of there. Now it's weird because I don't see any of the lines leaking above it or anything. It doesn't look like it's coming. I mean, sure, I'm pretty sure it's leaking into the bellow here. Pretty bad leak. I just turned off the engine to show you guys. But it doesn't look like it's coming out of the bellow and working its way this way. It looks like it's almost coming from behind this clamp. So I don't know if the rack and pinion is has a crack in it or what the heck's going on here but it seems easy enough to maybe go ahead and remove this clamp and maybe we could see if we see a crack in the rack here or maybe it's just a spot of rust and it's just rotted through all right so i got the cap off of the rack here and if we look at the rubber insulator you could see a hole right through it so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way and if we look at the cap that came off of it, you could see a big chunk of rust that pretty much corresponds with that hole that's on the rubber. And if we look at the rack and pinion, that's where the leak is at. So I knocked off the chunk of rust off of the cap here and you can see it revealed that bigger hole right there. And this is actually really common. I've changed uh, another rack and pinion on a Toyota Sequoia. And it had the same exact problems. These things uh, are rotting away and they cause holes in the bracket themselves or they cause a hole right into the rack and pinion like we have going on here. So it's not that uncommon on these Sequoias for this type of problem. Looking underneath the truck, you can see where both of the catalytic converters are painted yellow by the owner. The story behind this is he got both of his converters stolen, right? So he took it to the dealer and had them replace them. I know that was an expensive bill, a stupid expensive bill. Anyway, two months later, he gets hit again. They stole the converters a second time. Take it right back to the dealer, replace them both again. And that's unfortunate because this is big money right here for, you know, someone to make a quick hundred bucks or 200 bucks, whatever it is that they get for these stolen converters, cost the owner thousands of dollars. It's freaking crazy. But yeah, you can see all that stuff has been replaced. I mean, it sucks to get hit once, but two times within like two or three months, that's unfortunate. All right guys, so it's a little bit over a week later, we are back with this Toyota Sequoia. It's here for the rack and pinion. So we're gonna go ahead and install the rack and pinion alongside with two outer tie rods, because when you buy the rack and pinion, it already comes with the inner tie rods attached to it. So you might as well just change all of it. Uh, we're also gonna put on front brake pads and a front right ABS sensor. So it's going on that side. I'm not gonna record too much because as you can see, this uh, SUV doesn't fit in my garage and I wanna make sure I finish this before it gets dark so I have no time to waste here because we can't keep this uh, garage door open all night with the truck sticking out like this. So I disconnected the outer tie rods on both sides. So I decided to start with the front brake pads. And so far on the front right side, these pads were like C's inside of the caliper to the point where I had to use a slide hammer on the brake pad just to pull them out. So I just yanked this one out right now. So let me do some cleaning, make sure everything's fine and make sure the new pad fits in there nice and smooth without binding up. All right, so I see why uh, that pad didn't want to come out. It's because this lower piston is pretty much locked up. It doesn't want to move. I may have to take the caliper off just to see if I could get this piston to go in. Two uh, basically slide pins where the pad's right on, completely full of corrosion. So I took them over to the wire wheel, cleaned all the rust off of them and they look almost brand new again. All right, so I was able to remove the caliper and I got that lower piston to go in with some force. Just using the regular tool that I use to push in pistons on calipers. Um, so it took a little bit more force than the rest of them, but it did go in. I'm gonna tell the owner that I do recommend replacing this caliper because this is gonna be an ongoing issue with that lower piston sticking. So let me go ahead and clean up some more rust while I have the caliper uh, separated and then I'll put everything back together. So I'm all done on the front left side with the brakes. 
On this side, I still had to pull off the caliper to get the pads out of here, but the pistons on the caliper weren't seized up or anything. They went in just fine. Uh, so I cleaned up all the rust, put everything back together, got the new pads, and this is ready to go. Let me go ahead and knock out that front right ABS sensor. Wow, everything is a nightmare on this car. Nothing is coming off like it should. So here we are, front right side again. ABS sensor, just went ahead and cut it off because it's getting destroyed anyway. There's no way these things come out uh, especially if they are the original part so you can see i got it out of there all the copper wire strands all over the ground it was the other end of the sensor in pieces and when i got it out there was a ton of copper strands inside of there so i just grabbed uh, the vacuum went in there and sucked everything out before it could go into where the uh, wheel bearing section is or the uh, pickup ring so that's all clean but as you can see also the head of the bolt broke off right here so now i have to deal with this and try to extract this bolt i've been working on this car for a few hours all i've gotten done is put from brake pads on it and now working on the sensor a few hours guys it, it shouldn't take this long it's starting to get me worried about the rack and pinion about how much of a nightmare it's going to be to change that thing all right and that's another hour and a half or two hours just to install a abs sensor because the bolt that holds it down, the head just snapped off. So after messing with it for so long, I decided to weld on a stud at the base and I put a stainless steel nut on it to hold it in place. And I made sure that the sensor is uh, pretty much bottomed out right there so that we get a good ABS reading. So I'm gonna have to double check it, of course, once the car is done, take it out for a test drive and make sure that ABS sensor is reading correctly. But as you can see, it runs up along here goes over there comes around and plugs in right there now oh, this thing popped out of place this thing belongs right here there we go let me button this stuff up and then we could finally get to the rack and pinion I gotta decide what I wanna do because a ton of hours just messing with the ABS sensor and front brake pads. I don't know if I wanna get started on a rack and pinion right now because of the whole uh, garage issue. And it has begun. So far, everything seems to be coming apart. But I don't wanna jinx myself, so I'm just gonna keep pushing through. <laughs> don't, don't talk at it, don't look at it funny. Just keep working. And here it comes. I would say it's a boy. But that is not for us to decide, even though this baby clearly has a penis, it can decide its own gender. So after resting with this thing for a while, everything is finally put back together and bolted down. Complete rack and pinion is in it. I already sprayed the lines down here with CRC just to protect them a little bit. What gave me a freaking nightmare was these two fittings right here. So initially I got the top one in with no issues at all. Yes, that's my my hand, my finger trembling. Like I'm just lacking energy right now. You know when you just got the jitters? It's like 8 p.m. and I haven't even eaten today. So, <laughs> cause I've been working on this truck all day. Uh, so yeah, that first line went in like fast. And then this one, I spent so much time it would not line up. And you know how these things are. If you don't get them lined up, it's going to get cross-threaded. So I was really careful with it, but uh, after a while of messing with it, it wouldn't go in. I decided to just remove the first one I put in, and then this one fell right into place, and then this one fell in. So it's just one of those things where you just got to find a trick to it because you're trying to connect two hard lines together. But I finally got it in. No cross-threading, no nothing. Everything went good. Just took a ton of time. And that's it. You can see I got the outer tie rods on it. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling up the system with some with some power steering fluid. And you can see it's it's dark. It's it's late, guys. So I got to get this thing out of the garage because I got to go pick up my kids. I was supposed to be there two hours ago, so I'm super late. I'm trying to get this done. I gotta go get my kids. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating when you know you have to do something and then something like one little fitting like on that rack and pinion doesn't want to thread in and it just eats a ton of time and then the frustration starts to build and it just, it gets out of hand. 
So let's uh, let's put new power steering fluid in this thing and it should be all set. I'll put it on the ground and get it out the garage. All right, so last night I filled up the power steering fluid system and I got the truck out of the garage, parked it right here overnight. And this morning continued to uh, bleed the system and we're already at the point where there is minimal noise coming from the power steering pump. The fluids are topped off. So now it's time to take it out for a test drive and just continue to bleed out the system. The good news is I've been keeping an eye underneath the truck and there's absolutely no leaks, no drips, nothing. All right, so it seems like the power steering system has been completely bled out. There's no noises coming from the pump. The steering is super smooth. Uh, to go straight, you do have to hold the steering wheel a little bit to the left like this. And, uh, you know, I made sure to tell the owner it has to go in for wheel alignment. Uh, not too bad considering the whole rack and pinion and all the tie rods were chained. So a little bit to the left, not the worst thing ever. When it goes in for that wheel alignment, this will be corrected. Uh, but yeah, power steering works well. Uh, the brakes, let's not forget that we put front brake pads on it. So no weird noises or anything. It's stopping nice and smooth. The pedal feels good. So that's all set. The final thing is the ABS sensor. You can see right now that ABS light is flashing after I clear the codes, but I think, I don't know yet, but I think it's because my scanner is connected and right now I'm currently looking at data in the uh, ABS module. So I think that's the reason why that may be flashing. Don't know yet. Anyway, let's look at the data on the scanner. So here goes our rear right and rear left wheel. And here goes the two front wheels everything seems to be matching up we go back to value the only thing i noticed about the new sensor which is going to be this second one right here is that it's late to start responding a speed but then it eventually does match up with everything else and then when i decelerate like come to a stop sign it dropped to zero miles per hour way faster than the other factory three sensors so let me see if i could get a shot of that for you guys do you see that how it's at zero and eventually it jumps up okay so I'm gonna come to a stop sign right now sorry you saw how that one sensor came to zero before the rest of them so it's it's late to start every single time but it also comes to zero faster which is weird so those are weird symptoms um, the only thing I could possibly think of is the gap on the center. So maybe I could try uh, tightening up the gap on the center. Maybe get the sensors to sit a little bit closer uh, to that pickup ring. What I'm going to do right now is let's go ahead and disconnect my scanner and just drive it around. Let's see if that ABS uh, flashing turns off. And that's a no-go. The second I disconnected my scanner, the VCS light, ABS light, all that stuff came right back immediately the second I took off my scanner. So let's go back to the garage and see if we could mess with that scanner and we'll check the codes one more time, see what codes it through. All right, so I took the sensor off and I was able to clean a little bit more rust off of the knuckle to get the sensor to fit a little bit more flat. So sorry for the cracked glass. But hopefully you guys can see that right there that there is no gap between that boss and the sensor the sensor is butted right up against it now like i said i did have to clean a little bit of rust off of it but nothing major so that sensor is not going to get any closer at this point so what i'm expecting is that this should clear up our issue with the sensor being late to respond and then going to zero miles per hour a lot faster than other sensors so that's what this would fix if we could get that gap uh, smaller. But what it's not going to fix is circuit codes. So these are the codes that keep coming back. Front speed sensor, right hand circuit. So this wheel. But look at the other code. ABS control system malfunction. This one might just be a side effect of the, the first code. But it's not the sensor because the sensor is brand new. Yet we still have a circuit code. Yeah, there's going to be something else going on here and I'm not sure what it is it can't be a straight up open because we are getting signal from this wheel while we're driving we're getting our speeds if we had a broken wire over here like say on the harness side you know the engine harness side then we wouldn't get anything on the scanner but this thing does pick up a wheel speed anyway uh now that i adjusted the gap let's take it out for a test drive and see if it made a difference well before we go out for our second test drive 
let's have a look at the rack and pinion and look at that absolutely no drips no leaks nothing at all so out for a second test drive and fixing a gap on that abs sensor did fix the issue of the sensor basically starting late so let's look at the data right here i'm going to try to just hold the camera right here while i drive and you're going to see now everything moves at the same rate you can see that second sensor is a lot more responsive now Let's go ahead and come to a stop. There we go. So now it's moving at the same rate as everything else. So everything looks good. Um, if there's still a circuit issue with that front right, that would be a completely different issue. Just a guess that I took, but it doesn't look like it's gonna fix the issue. Hey, do you guys remember when I said it doesn't look like it's gonna fix the issue? but it doesn't look like it's gonna fix the issue. You see, I did say that. Well, looks like I was wrong because ever since I disconnected my scanner, no ABS light, no traction light. So I've been driving it around, uh, turning the car on and off, you know, to maybe try to reset things to see if it'll pop back up and nothing. So I think what was going on here was that gap on the front right sensor was setting a circuit code, which is weird. I've never seen something like that set a circuit code. Usually like say if it's circuit is like there's an open, there's a short to ground, um, whatever, right? To me, that's usually what implies a circuit code. This is the first time I've seen an ABS sensor with the wrong gap that it's not reading the same signal as the other wheels. And all of a sudden it throws a circuit code. And I guess that does make sense if I think about it because Say there's corrosion on the wires, right? Well, that corrosion can affect the signal and send a delayed wheel speed sensor signal back to the computer. So they could interpret that as a circuit issue. So, but yeah, driving it, it's completely gone. That's interesting. So I'm happy to see it's fixed. <laughs> I'm about to just call the owner and just tell him, uh, Hey, uh, sorry, but the sensor did not fix that specific issue, but he's going to be watching the video anyway. I don't know if I mentioned this, but he is a subscriber of the channel, so he's going to be watching this video on his truck. And uh, so I guess it did fix the issue. <laughs> That's good. Everyone's happy, right? I'm glad I uh, went back in there and took a second look at it instead of just saying, well, we put a sensor on it and it didn't fix it. That's it, ship it. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes problems can be fixed if you just take a second look at them, okay? But we, know, we all know how people are nowadays. Everyone just wants to make a quick buck and ship it, right? Anyway, guys, I'm done driving this car. There's no reason to drive it. Power steering works absolutely fantastic. No more leaking power steering fluid. Uh, the brakes feel great, no weird noises. And now our ABS and VCS traction issues are fixed so the owner could take his truck in for a wheel alignment and that'd be all set i'm sure he'll be happy with it but we are going to see this truck again in the future i think he wants to replace valve cover gaskets because they are just pouring oil all over the place but that's it for this one